this series of videos is talk about a balancing loop, which is also kind of a goal-seeking loop, and what happens if there's a delay in the part of in part of that uh, feedback cycle, and how that causes the system to oscillate. So even very small, simple loops you'll see can generate some kind of crazy oscillation. And, uh, and I thought I would walk you through that because it's awfully interesting, I think. So the example I'm going to use in all these videos is uh, home, the home building industry, basically. And so what we're going to walk through in this model is you have a population of 10,000 people. Uh, there's only 1,000 homes at the mo in the beginning for that population. So the other 9,000 are living in apartments or, um, you know, waiting to relocate to this town or, or something, uh, something like that. So, but they desire to buy these, uh, these homes. Uh, so we kind of want 10,000 homes. That's the stable, uh, stable case of this model. Uh, builders, uh, when they see this need that we've had 9,000 people not living in homes, they are going to build. Uh, so that drives the building industry to build. Uh, they build more aggressively the larger the need is. So if they see, like in the beginning, 9,000 homes are needed, they're going to build a lot. If they see only 20 homes are needed, they're going to build a smaller, uh, smaller amount. So that's pretty, pretty natural. And then lastly, it takes a year to build the house. Now this is probably underrepresenting it because uh, you need uh, zoning and you need to purchase land and you know there's a lot to developing a, uh, a house uh, but nevertheless I pegged that as a year and um, and just to make the model interesting the average lifetime of a house is just three years so um, it's probably a little bit short for realism but it helps the model um, have a behavior uh, quickly but you could extend this extend this out but essentially what that means is that houses get rebuilt uh, on a three-year uh, three-year cycle. Okay, so that is the scenario that we're going to walk uh, walk through. Now, if you recall, I always like to walk through the four tools of system uh, dynamics: the causal loop diagram, the behavior over time diagram, the stock and flow diagram, and then the actual uh, model, which I do uh, in Excel, as you guys know. So, uh, so therefore, let's start with the causal loop uh, diagram, which is pretty pretty straightforward in this case. Okay, your main, um, main topic is houses, okay? So you've got houses and you have your population, okay? And the gap between those two is the need for houses. Like at the beginning, there's 10,000 houses, sorry, 1,000 houses, 10,000 population, so there's 9,000 need for houses. So that need drives the building industry to build, and the more they build, um, the more houses, houses they are. So if, if we go around our loop with kind of pluses and minuses, so an increase in houses decreases the need. An increase in the need increases the building, and an increase in the building increases the houses. So you have one negative, you have an odd number of negative um, uh, signs here, so it's a balancing loop. Which we would expect. You'd expect it to, balancing loops kind of keep things in order, they goal seek, the goal of this loop is 10,000 houses, so it, it seeks to uh, reach that stable equilibrium. But just to finish, an increase in population would increase the need for houses. Okay, so that's the that's the basic uh, loop. Now, just throw on one uh, one thing, which makes this quite unusual, is that there's a delay between building and the houses actually existing, which I talked about. So this is sometimes marked by two hash signs in causal loop diagrams, or the word delay. Okay, so there's a delay. You can notice the need immediately. You can, uh, the building could start immediately. Um, but, uh, but there's certainly a delay, a one year delay between when you start the building process and when there's actual, actual houses. And we'll see this delay is the thing that makes this uh, model very interesting. 
Okay, so that's the causal loop diagram. Uh, next, let's do the behavior over time uh, diagram.
going to do this model on three months. So, three months, uh, I'll call it adjustment time. Okay, and what essentially means is if I have a goal of closing something in three months, in one month I'm going to close one third of it. Okay, so essentially you take the whole gap, you divide by this adjustment time, and that's much how much you're going to build in that time. So if you have the gap of 9,000, three months adjustment time, you're going to build 3,000 houses. So that's the only other piece that needs to be uh, put together. Now you have a very simple goal gap balancing loop that's easy to model. So now we'll move over to Excel. We'll model this thing to take a look at what it, uh, what it looks like, and then we'll add the interesting delay uh, element to the problem. Okay. Uh, I just drew on the board uh, in Excel. And uh, we start with our constants, which um, are things that don't have anything, uh, you know, no arrows going into them. So the two constants are the goal, and the goal is 10,000 houses. And the adjustment time is three months. And if you remember, adjustment time is really, uh, maybe I'll rename it here. It's the time. It's really the goal time to fill the gap, okay? So the builders look at a gap of, um, you know, whatever, 8,000 houses, 9,000 houses, and they want to fill that gap within three months. Uh, so that's, that's what that adjustment time really is. And each of these constants needs to be named. So this, these are, uh, I'm going to call this population. That's where the goal comes from. And this is basically time to fill gap. Okay, now we do the model. We're going to do this in months. So time in months. Okay. The formula there is whatever's to the left plus one. Then I do my stocks as a beginning and an ending row. So beginning houses, ending houses. So uh, we're going to start with 1,000 houses. Okay, and the beginning always equals the ending of the period before. Okay, and then between the stocks, you've got the, between the beginning and ending, you have the flows. So we have one flow going in called building. And the building is basically the gap, which I didn't calculate, so let's add the gap first. Okay, so the gap is need for houses. Okay, we have uh, a goal of 10,000 houses. We have an actual 1,000 houses. So our gap is 9,000 houses. Okay? And then building is the gap divided by, try that again, the gap divided by how long we want to close the gap. So if there's 9,000 houses of the gap, we're targeting three months to fill the gap, we're going to build 3,000 houses. Okay? Um, and then the ending houses are the beginning houses plus the building. So in the end, we have 4,000 houses. This assumes that houses are built instantaneously. So uh, that's obviously not a fair assumption, but maybe for some things that can happen, but not for a house. So essentially, instantaneously, the builders saw the need. They uh, built 3,000 houses. And so now in the end of the first month, you have 4,000 houses. Okay, so that's it for the, um, the model. Let me uh, bring this to two alphabets. So that goes to row eight. So we'll do 48, 46 months, I guess. Uh, we'll do up to AZ. Row eight. Okay, let's take a look at the ending houses variable. Insert line line. Okay. There we go. They do get built quickly if you build them instantaneously. So you can see um, you can see we start at the 1,000 houses. Uh, we end at the 10,000 houses as I drew. Now you could do things on the model if you say, well, three months, that's way too aggressive. You know, builders would never try and build, start that many. You can change this to 12 months or something like that, and you could see 
six months. You can see essentially the shape is the same. You know, you're going to end, you're going to smoothly approach the 10,000. Um, uh, and then your goal, time to fill the gap, is obviously your aggressiveness. Uh, when you see a gap, you know, how, how quickly are you going to go after it? Okay. Um, so that's, uh, that's it for the simple model. Uh, now uh, we'll go back to the board and we'll make the whole story more complicated.